plant-based versus manufacturing. Here's where we start learning what's going on, okay? Manufactured foods. I hate to do this to you guys, but that granola bar that's in the back, that's manufactured, okay? Um, an apple is not manufactured, okay? Anything that's packaged is manufactured, okay? So what happens? An apple that you pull off a tree is born with vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, and those enzymes are the key. Enzymes are everything, because enzymes are like a little computer code that tell your body what to do with it. Put the vitamins here, the fiber here, and get rid of the rest. Okay? When something's manufactured, it has no enzymes. So your body takes it in, and your body goes, hmm, okay, she's going to go for a run, so I'll let her use those calories for that. Or, he's going to sit on the couch, so since I have nothing to do with these calories, we're just going to store them in the fat cells. Okay? And this is really important to understand. What the food label says on your food and what your body does with it are two totally different things. So, just because I'm picking on the granola bar in the back, I haven't really read the ingredient list, but I'm just going to make it up. So, let's say that granola bar has zero grams of fat. Okay? Because it's manufactured, it has no enzymes, if you're just going to go back and sit at your desk, it's going to be stored as fat. Even though it says zero grams of fat. Okay? Fat cells, to me, are like stretchy Ziploc baggies. And anything that our body does not know what to do with, it's going to just shove it in there. Okay, so toxins, processed foods, anything. It doesn't know chemicals, anything. Just, gonna, just shove it in there. Okay, so that's what we want to really try to stay away from. Now, here's another one for you. Who's drinking zero Coke in here? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> okay. Oh, and what are you eating? Uh-oh, now yeah. I'm really going to pick on you. I'm sorry. Okay, beautiful salad. Here we go. Here we go. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I had to do it. But you're the perfect example for this, okay? She, you're eating a salad because it's healthy, right? And I like it, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Don't answer anything the, else. <laughs> okay. The Coke, the zero calorie Coke, the zero Coke, has chemicals in it. Our body can't differentiate when you, it doesn't differentiate foods when you ingest them together. So here she's having this wonderful salad, but she's drinking the Coke with it. So unfortunately, the Coke, the chemicals of the Coke is going to throw the body off and the body's going to go, I have no idea what any of this is. I'm going to store it all as fat. So now just <laughs> some water. No more coke. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> just, just about how you mix things. So, so here, if you really wanted to drink the coke, just drink it without food. Okay? Just drink it without food. That's it. Just drink it separate. So drink water now. Someone give the lady a glass of water, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm so sorry. She's going to hate me. But. So you're saying that, that if she drinks the coke separately, it's a it as a coke. Correct. I mean, it's still it's still bad. Okay, I'm not. Oh, right. Right. It's still bad, but at least it's not going to destroy her salad. Because her, that salad has great nutrients in it. It's really good for, her, but yet it's not going to be absorbed the way she wants it to be absorbed because of the chemicals of the coke. What about the salad dressing? Is it not manufactured? Um, it probably is, but see, you have because you have the raw salad, you have all the enzymes of the salad, so those enzymes are going to probably help break that down. So I'm not too harsh on it, but the Coke will do worse, though. Since you're talking about the Coke, right? It's it's crap. Yes. Is this diet or non-diet? Yes. But isn't the diet worse than the regular Coke? Um. Because well, it is and it isn't. Um. I the diet it gets definitely chemicals, and yes, I'd say it's horrible. The Coke, unfortunately, especially in the United States, is just as bad. And the reason being is in the United States they use high fructose corn syrup as the sweetener for that Coke. They don't use sugar. High fructose corn syrup is linked to high cholesterol, to heart disease, and to a whole slew of other things. So it's almost just as bad. So if you were going to drink a soda, you want to get a soda that when you read the label, it says sugar. I mean, I, I don't want to propose, I'm not one to say drink sodas to begin with, but if you had to have a soda, I'd prefer that you have a soda that's made with sugar 
as opposed to high fructose corn syrup. So I don't know if I really answered your question, but kind of. No, I mean, I'll, we know. I know that both are bad. But yeah. Out of the two, which is better? I mean, if you can say. Let me ask you this: Why do you drink soda? I'm actually <coughs> from the soda. Oh, you're away from the sodas. Yeah, but I have a son. Okay. Who does go? Okay. So. I mean, um, I, I tried to cut it down, but definitely. How old is your son? Six. Well, oh, your turn now. Yeah, you and I can talk about the comfort situation, but, but what you got to remember, it goes back to that statement that you're growing an adult from scratch. So you're, by him drinking Coke, you're starting cholesterol issues. Because in order for the body to break down high fructose corn syrup, think of cholesterol as spackling. Mean, this is going to sound strange, but just bear with me. Think of cholesterol as spackling, okay? And what happens is when we ingest high fructose corn syrup, now that could be in a cookie, in a Coke, it doesn't matter where it comes from, high fructose corn syrup, when we ingest it, our body creates nicks in our arteries and our body then creates the spackling to cover it up, which is cholesterol, okay? And typically, you know, not that you're gonna have a high cholesterol child, but then as an adult, they're gonna have issues with that because they haven't been able to really break down that and, and their body's just producing more and more and more. And then you get these, I have clients, I have clients that say that, that they were born with high cholesterol. And they weren't born with it, but probably what had to happen was as, as in their childhood, they were consuming things that attributed to it. And then as adults, they, they couldn't break it down anymore. And then that goes, that's the person who's on high cholesterol meds. So. But isn't it true though that it, it genetically, well, there is a genetic factor. Yes, okay. there is a genetic factor, absolutely. But but many times we can um, we we are are not we have a genetic factor, but it doesn't mean we're going to get it. So, for example, my father has adult onset diabetes. I have a genetic factor for diabetes <coughs> in my family, but I don't sit and eat sugar all day long. If I did. More than likely, I would have adult onset diabetes also. Okay. Okay. So you know, yes, you can have that factor in you, but you can also eat a certain way that it may not affect you at all. And that's really the goal, you know, to keep our body in such a system that it's always just strong and it's combating everything. It's putting those things like on the side shelves and saying, yeah, it's there, but you know, whatever, just leave it on the side. It's no big deal. But I can help you with your son and figuring out something different. For the coach. I mean, that's not the only issue. So. <laughs> okay. so, so you know, so these these are things that we want to do. We want to we want to get our systems to work without all this other stuff hampering us. So ideally, we try to focus that the the majority of our diet comes from fresh natural ingredients that aren't manufactured. And I'm not saying that you can't have it. I'm not saying that you can't have that granola bar that's back there, but are you eating one? <laughs> okay, I'm not saying you can't have that, but I'm saying that if you looked at your day, the majority of your day comes from fresh, healthy ingredients, and then those things are fillers here and there. And then you'll, you'll be fine. But you just can't have the majority, you know, the average person, the majority of their day is processed foods. The, my average client, my average client starts off with with a coffee with sugar in the morning, with toast and jelly. Okay, this is the average client. They get to the office and someone either brings in bagels and lox or donuts. Okay, then it's lunchtime and they have iced tea with sugar, and they have some kind of a sandwich with chips. Okay, and then and then all of a sudden they they're, they're, they start to like fall. Okay, and I'm about to talk about all these ups and downs too. So when they start to fall, what they go for another coffee with more sugar in it because they need the energy. And then they get home and they snack on whatever's available. Whatever is out, they snack on it. And then hopefully they have a decent meal at dinner. And that's my average client. Okay? So here's something, and, and we'll talk about a little bit more in, in this, but I just kind of want to mention this to you. Sugar, flour, and dairy all metabolize as a sugar, okay? Sugar gives us a high. 
So you, the client who has the caffeine with the sugar, the coffee in the morning, right? All of a sudden they get this spike of high. Then they have toast with jam. They get more of a spike of high. By the time they get to their office, they're falling. So as they're falling, that bagel or the donut looks amazing because unconsciously it's gonna give them another high, okay? Then they start to fall again, it's lunchtime, and that's why they get the iced tea with sugar, so they have some caffeine and sugar. The sandwich and chips gives them a little bit more of a high, then they fall again, and that's where the coffee and sugar kick back in, okay? And that's what I'd like to try to get you out of. You don't wanna be in that, because unfortunately what we do have is we have something called adrenal glands, and adrenal glands are our energy receptors. Okay? And if we falsely give our body energy, then our adrenal glands just poop out because they try to stabilize our energy. So as we're going up that peak, they're trying to pull us down a little bit just to stabilize it because they're like, that's too much energy too fast. And as they're trying to stabilize us, they get exhausted. And then there comes a point in time where all of a sudden you're like, man, I can't get out of bed. I can't, I can't focus right. It's 3 o'clock and I need a nap. And you're like, what's wrong? What is wrong with me? And it's because your adrenal glands have said, you know what, I'm done. I've tried for years to stabilize this person. I can't do it anymore. So, so what we gotta do is we've gotta start to create healthier habits so that we naturally have that energy without the need of caffeine or sugar. And if we decide that we want a coffee in the morning just for taste because we really like it and it's warm and comforting, that's great, but that we're not using it as a survival mechanism. Make sense? Mm -hmm.